Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everyone for being here for today's update. I'll have more to say in a few minutes. But before that, I want to turn it over to Commissioner Morrison for a situational update. Commissioner Morrison. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Morrison. I'm the Commissioner of Public Safety. This morning, the state of Vermont is in much better shape than we were at this time yesterday. That being said, we are still in active response mode and have multiple rescues ongoing. The hardest hit area currently is Lamoille County, where we rescued 32 people and numerous animals overnight. This brings the total number of rescues since Sunday to two, over 200, and we have facilitated over 100 evacuations. As I said, today we have numerous water rescues underway in Lamoille County, and we are compiling reports of damaged or destroyed critical infrastructure. Throughout the day, we will continue to have swift water and urban search and rescue teams staged across the state to address local requests for assistance related to life safety concerns. Generally speaking, rivers have crested and river flooding should wind down throughout the day. The southern and central part of the parts of the state have seen flood waters recede and the sun come out. These areas are quickly turning the corner to the recovery phase of this disaster. For now, things are stable in many areas across the state. I will continue to remind Vermonters that further precipitation is forecasted for Thursday and Friday that could bring significant additional rainfall. We have to continue to be vigilant and mindful that more flooding is a very real possibility. Currently, flooding concerns persist at the following locations the Winooski River at Essex, the Lamoille River at Jeffersonville, the Missiscoy River at East Berkshire, the Otter Creek at Center Rutland, and the Arrowhead Dam in Milton. All rivers are expected to be below flood stage within the next 24 hours. Regardless of river levels, our waterways are not safe right now. The currents are fast, there is a tremendous amount of debris, and folks really need to stay off our rivers for the time being. I'm relieved to say that as of 8 o'clock this morning, no fatalities have been reported. This is undoubtedly due to two things, Vermonters' common sense and resilience, and the incredible dedication, professionalism, and hard work of our first responder community. I have deep appreciation and respect for all of our local, county, and state first responders. Thank you for your life-saving work during this disaster. We need to remain vigilant in the days to come as many disaster-related deaths occur after the acute phase and during cleanup and recovery. Vermonters, keep your guard up and do not take chances. Numerous communities are under boil water notices. A list of impacted water districts can be found on the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources website at anr.vermont.gov forward slash flood. I'm happy to report that statewide we are below 1,000 power outages thanks to the hard work and commitment of our public utility partners. Those returning to their flooded homes should take precautions when entering. Do not turn on your circuit breaker or use any power sources until you have had your system checked by a licensed electrician. For those with damaged property, please report your damages to 211 as we are collecting data for a possible federal disaster de declaration. We need your information in order to paint an accurate picture of the extent of damage across the state. Homeowners should also contact their insurance company. If you are displaced from your home and need shelter, please call 211. There are numerous local and Red Cross shelters operating, as well as three state-run shelter locations. Lastly, the state has established a website for those wishing to volunteer in storm relief vermont.gov forward slash volunteer. People who wish to help are asked to register and not self-deploy. 
We are not asking for donations of items at this time. If you want to help, make a monetary donation to an established recovery organization, such as the Northern New England Red Cross or your local United Way. And I will turn things now back to Governor Scott. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> We're grateful to be joined by FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell. She and her team have been working around the clock to support Vermont's response to this catastrophic flooding. As well, I want to express my appreciation to Senator Sanders, Senator Welch, and Congresswoman Pallant for their outreach. I spoke with each of them over the last 48 hours, and as you can see, they're here, and they've made it clear they will work in Congress to help Vermont move forward. I also appreciate the number of messages I've received from fellow governors on both sides of the aisle, offering support and immediate help, and in a few cases, We've taken them up on that. President Biden also called to express his concern for what we're going through. He offered his full support and that of his team. And that's why Administrator Criswell is here today. This isn't a dog and pony show. We have work to do this afternoon. She's here on behalf of President Biden. And after this press conference, we'll be surveying damage as part of her and her team's work to assess how they can best help Vermonters. As I discussed yesterday, the flooding we've seen is historic. And as waters begin to recede, at least for the time being, we'll be surveying the damage uh, done to infrastructure, homes, and businesses. And again, this may not be over. With rain in the forecast and nowhere for it to go, we could see waters rise again. So it's critical for Vermonters be aware of their surroundings, remain vigilant, and plan ahead. Although we're still in our immediate response phase and not quite at a point where we're focused on recovery, later today I'll be signing an exec executive order so we can expedite rebuilding through temporary regulatory relief, which will be critical for emergency response and infrastructure repairs. We'll have more information on that in the next 24 hours. Next, later today, Administrator Criswell, our congressional delegation, and I will visit some impacted sites surveying damage. I'll also be traveling later this week to many heavily impacted communities across the state. Before I turn it over to the Administrator, I want to once again thank all those working on the response and the thousands of Vermonters who are stepping up to help us get, get us through this crisis. I continue to be inspired by their resilience and humanity so many have shown us, from our first responders and, recu and rescue crews to neighbors checking on neighbors. I know we'll get through this by working together. So with that, I'll turn it over to the administrator and once again thank her and her team for the tireless work. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everybody. Governor, just thank you so much for um, inviting me to join you today on this assessment um, and uh, our, your, uh, your praise for the team that's been here working really hard. I just wanted to start out by saying on behalf of the President um, and in the entire federal family, our thoughts are with everyone across Vermont right now as they are experiencing the impacts of this truly historic and catastrophic flooding event. Um, our hearts are with everybody that's going through this, and I know many people are remembering what it was like in Irene. And uh, the biggest thing, and I th you've heard this already, is making sure that as the continued weather changes, that Vermonters are taking all of the steps to understand what their risks are and that they're trying to stay safe. Um, as you heard from the governor, uh, FEMA and the entire Biden-Harris administration we're here ready to support. We had teams on the ground prior to the declaration so we could be ready to respond immediately. That includes our incident management teams to help with the overall federal coordination, as well as our search and rescue teams. And we will continue to send additional resources um, as we work with the governor and his team to understand what the needs are as we go um, into the recovery phase, but even to continue to support the ongoing response. 
And thanks to the swift approval um, of the governor's request for disaster declaration by President Biden, that gives us the ability to mobilize the entire federal family to come in here and provide those life-saving, life-sustaining response needs um, that are so critical right now in this current phase of the disaster. And as you heard from the governor, today is about understanding what those impacts are, understanding what the total extent of damage is across Vermont, so we can make sure that we are turning on the right programs and bringing the right resources in here to support the ongoing recovery efforts. As we work with the governor's office uh, to better understand the overall extent and the impact of this, I think you've already heard this from the governor and you've heard this from the commissioner, but it's worth repeating. Very important that Vermonters stay vigilant. Stay vigilant, stay alert, stay aware to your surroundings. I know that we are expecting more rain, and so you need to make sure that you are not putting yourself in harm's way, that you're not moving into walking through or driving through water, especially moving water. We know that it takes just six inches of water for somebody to be wiped off of their feet. And in that water, we see a lot of debris. We see down power lines. We see things that can cause additional damage. And so I really encourage everybody, please, do not walk, do not swim, or do not drive through these waters. Even as they're starting to recede, be very cognizant of what the future rain is going to bring over the next couple of days. Um, as you're starting your uh, cleanup process and your recovery process, one thing that I really want to emphasize to everybody here is you do not need to wait to be able to see if FEMA is going to come do an inspection. Take pictures, document your damage, gather your important papers, contact your insurance company, have all of that information available, um, but you do not need to wait to start the cleanup process. The, the faster you can get that moved out and the debris moved out of your home, the easier it's going to be um, for the recovery time. And so as you continue to do this and as we continue to see what the extent of the damages are, I just want everybody here to know that FEMA is going to be here to support Vermont, to support the governor and all of your needs um, as you transition from response and into the recovery phase. We will be here with you. So with that, I would just say stay safe, stay strong. And with that, I will turn it over to Senator Sanders. Uh, thank you very much, Administrator, Commissioner, thank you. Governor, thank you and your team for the hard work that they are doing. Um, there's not much that I can add to what has already been said. I, I think we all understand we are now living through the worst natural disaster to impact the state of Vermont since 1927, where dozens of people died at that time, and thank God at this point, we have not seen any fatalities, and we all hope uh, that that will be the case. Uh, what we are looking at now are thousands, thousands of homes and businesses which have been damaged, sometimes severely. We're looking at roads and bridges, some of which have been wiped out and will need uh, basic and fundamental repairs. Uh, and I want to echo uh, what everyone else has said here. Right now, as we speak, you have road crews and emergency teams who are working 24-7 to save lives and save property. They are uh, incredible heroes and heroines, and we all thank them very much uh, for what they are doing. Uh, what the delegation, Senator Welch and Congresswoman Ballant and I are working very hard on uh, is to make sure that all of the relevant federal resources are brought into this state as quickly as possible. And I uh, spoke to the president yesterday from, uh, he was in Europe, uh, and he has pledged to do everything that he and his team can do. And uh, that's why uh, Administer, Administrator uh, Chris Wall is here today uh, assessing the damage. Uh, we will be working not only with FEMA, we'll play, uh, which will play a prominent role in our recovery uh, will play a prominent role in the cleanup efforts, the mitigation efforts. Uh, we'll be working with the Department of Transportation, the Department of Agriculture, uh, and other federal agencies. Um, I also want to make clear that our delegation, and we talked about that a moment ago, will do its best to make sure that the uh, private insurance companies 
uh, respond quickly and effectively uh, to the uh, needs of the people of Vermont. Uh, I'm going to work with them to make sure that uh, they uh, are not nickel and diming people, but are responding to the real damage uh, that people are, are seeing. Uh, so with that, let me thank uh, the administrator for being here and the great work that she and her team are doing. Uh, and um, I am confident that when we stand together, uh, we are going to do the best that we can to get out of this catastrophe. Thank you. And now let me introduce Senator Welch. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Governor Scott, thank you so much for just an incredible response uh, on your part, uh, but also on the part of your entire team. It's really inspiring uh, to see everyday Vermonters showing up for work and whatever it takes to be done to help Vermonters be safe and to recover. You, you recover, you do it. Uh, and it's all about cooperation, and it's all about not complaining. It's all about facing the day before you. Uh, and every Vermonter whose home has been uh, affected has just got a long, very tough road ahead. Uh, I remember, as many of you do, uh, folks going back to their homes after Irene, and there'd be a couple of feet of mud in the basement. Neighbors would be showing up, helping to dig it out. Uh, but it's tough, it's long, and the recovery begins today. So all of us are just inspired by the work uh, of the first responders, the emergency management uh, professionals, National Guard, the medical folks, everyone. Uh, I also want to thank the reporters. You know, this is a time when local news is what people absolutely need desperately. Uh, and the news that uh, has been provided by our press corps has been I think a real security uh, uh, for Vermonters to know what's going on. So thank you for that. You know, all of us have a job to do. Those of us uh, in the delegation, uh, led by Senator Sanders and uh, with uh, me and uh, Congresswoman uh, Ballin, there's a couple of things that we have to do, and we'll just be coordinating with the governor's office. One is uh, FEMA is dealing with an unprecedented number of de national disasters. They're going to need a plus up in their funding. We're going to do every single thing we can to make sure that FEMA has the funds uh, to do everything that Vermonters are entitled to. And we've received, uh, Bernie and I on the Senate floor, assurances and offers of help, including from uh, Republicans. This is a real emergency. It's not the n use of the name to try to leverage uh, spending on something else. This is emer an emergency. Uh, so our job will be to make certain that the funds are there so that FEMA can do uh, everything on behalf of Vermonters that Vermonters need and are entitled to. Uh, second, there's a lot of hassles that folks face uh, with paperwork. And as much as everyone tries to make that as simple as possible, it can be difficult. Uh, Bernie and Becca and I are going to coordinate our casework teams so that we can try to provide the best and quickest and most efficient response uh, to Vermonters. So we'll be out there in addition to what uh, Senator Sanders said about, uh, uh, about keeping an eye on and doing all we can to encourage insurance companies to be fair and to be quick. So uh, this is going to be an ongoing process and we will be all in uh, to back up the very hard on the ground work. Ultimately it's about that business. It's about that Vermont family uh, that wants to get back in action, have their feet on the ground, and be able to move ahead. And we will do our part. And uh, I'm quite proud to be here with Vermonters who are working so hard and so effectively to respond to the needs of our citizens. Thank you. And now, Congresswoman Ballant. Hey, Becca. Thank you. Thank you. So my message to Vermonters is, is really simple. It's that this kind of event brings up a tremendous amount of trauma for communities and for individuals. I know from speaking with people across the state in the last few days, they're still reeling from the pandemic and this uh, emergency has brought up memories of what happened during Tropical Storm Irene. We cannot overstate the impact that trauma can have on the lives, particularly of, of children and adolescents. So as the governor said, you know, it, we have seen Vermonters stepping up to help out each other. I know that's going to continue to happen. 
You can sign up to volunteer on Vermont.gov. Please do that. Don't self-deploy, as the governor said. Please be part of a coordinated uh, <clears throat> a coordinated event in terms of helping your neighbors. But on the day to day, what I'm asking Vermonters to do is be gentle with one another. This is a difficult time for so many, for families, for individuals, for small businesses, and also for farmers. As we were driving down from the airport, saw lots of cropland that has been destroyed. As we know, even on a good day, farming in Vermont, uh, it's tough to, to make ends meet. So please be gentle with your neighbors. Let, let them know that, that you're there for them and we are gonna be there for you. Our teams will be coordinating. We'll stay in close contact with uh, Administrator Chriswell and with the governor and we are strong. We're gonna get through it together. Thank you. And the governor again, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, thank you, Be Becca. Um, we'll now open it up to questions. You mentioned farmlands being flooded. Would that be something covered under the emergency declaration that's already been approved by the president, or do you need to separate USDA disaster? I believe there's there's some separation there, but I might. Uh... Right, the agriculture piece is not part of what the Stafford Act covers. That would be work that we can help coordinate with the the Department of Agriculture um, to make sure we get the right uh, federal representatives in here to better understand what the impacts are. Administrator, as Senator Welch mentioned, an unprecedented uh, number of natural disasters. Uh, can you talk about you know, the role of climate change and all of this and how you guys responded to this? Yeah, you know, what I can say is that it, it, my two plus years so far in this role is that I have seen an increase in records being broken. Right, records that have stood for decades or even a century. Um, and it's happening over and over again. And so climate change is a factor, I think, in what we are seeing um, as a result of this increase in the amount of rain that's coming and not just an event like this, but even in our hurricanes. Um, and we have to start to think about what is this going to look like in 10 years from now so we can understand what those risks are going to be because I think what we're facing today is not what we faced 10 years ago. And so in order to help reduce the impacts of that, we really need to start to better understand what it's going to look like 10 and 20 years from now so we can use our mitigation dollars to help reduce those impacts and help these communities be more resilient. Are the rescues still happening? You mentioned the Loyal County, so those are actively happening, and where in the Loyal County is that happening? Our most, the most recent information I have is that they're in Jeffersonville, but that there are threats and potential calls for our swift water rescue assets in other places in Lamoille County. How, how do you explain that the swift water rescues are still happening on a regular basis when the rivers have crested and are starting to go down? Is that just a consequence of the storm moving north and so the worst impacts are still in the north area presently? I can't answer that. I, I don't know if the governor can. Well, again, I mean, water flows downhill, right? So um, we've seen it here. It's starting to, it crested and is lowering in the Montpelier area. But that means the water's heading somewhere else, and that's to Chittenden County. And uh, so we're seeing the elevation there. We're seeing it in uh, communities like Jeffersonville uh, and, uh, and Johnson as well. Yeah, the, with the forecast being what it is, situations like the Wrightsville Dam, what are the levels of concern there and yeah. how's that holding up? Yeah, we've been, we've been concerned about that since uh, last Sunday. Uh, and so we've been monitoring uh, the level. Uh, as you know, it got up to about uh, one foot below um, where we'd have to open up the, the gates. Um, but we, we were able to get through that moment. Um, so we're monitoring it at this point. And uh, that's my, one of my biggest concerns is what about Thursday and Friday? And if um, we'll just have to see what it brings us. But we're monitoring the situation and trying to make sure that we allow for some capacity as we can to lower, uh, you know, create more reservoir capacity at Wrightsville in particular, but all the other dams as well. So it's not just there, we're looking across the state. From what you know like? now, what, what do you anticipate on Thursday and Friday? We don't know. I mean, what the Weather Service is telling us in, in our SEOC brief this morning, um, they, were, they were thinking maybe one to two inches uh, Thursday and Friday. But as we've seen over the last year, 
um, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, you can they can try and predict to their best uh, ability, uh, but um, but I wouldn't say that we knew that we were going to get uh, seven to nine inches uh, in this past storm. So we'll see what happens Thursday and Friday, but we're monitoring the situation. I was going to say, what is the state's preparation? For the well, again, we want to preserve what we have, um, trying to to alleviate. Uh, some of the uh, the uh, structures uh, in terms of, uh, of, of the damage done in front of their uh, uh, culverts and box culverts and so forth uh, so that we can allow water to to go through them because that's where a lot of the damage has been uh, clogging up the the inlets um, as well uh, trying to make sure that we have the the capacity in those reservoirs uh, so that we can um, we can allow for more capacity I know Barry and Montpelier are under boil water notices. Are you aware of any other towns that are, and are there any plans to deploy water trucks? Yeah, I would say that uh, most communities uh, might be under that uh, boil water notice, but uh, Commissioner Morrison. Uh, yes, there are multiple communities. I don't know the exact number, but the, there's, an, there's a real-time list of the w impacted water districts. So remember, it's not by town. It's by the water district where you get your water service from. Um, and that website can be, again, can be found at uh, www.anr, for Agency of Natural Resources, .vermont.gov, forward slash flood. Yeah, the governor and members of the delegation and the minister have to exit out this door right now. So if everyone can stay put as they do so, the rest of the team and the representatives of FEMA will be able to stay and answer additional questions. Okay. Are you going to continue to facilitate? Yeah, people are, Very good. Feel free to, um, one of the questions I have is, um, so the, the FEMA money, the federal money we're getting, is this a loan? Is this a grant? Is it both? What's, what's the rough breakdown of this? Yeah, so um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lori Ehrlich. I'm the regional administrator for New England um, for FEMA. And I, um, I, I think that there are, T today is a day for assessment where we're going to be determining the extent of the damage and then what will follow after um, will be, um, you know, uh, depending on that, um, that assessment will be um, what the funding will be. So I, it's, it's hard to characterize it at this point, um, but after the assessment we will, we will certainly know more and I know that the governor is working on a major disaster declaration. Senator Welch, I think this is best suited for you. Do you foresee the farm bill as playing any role in perhaps delivering funds to Vermont? Uh, I don't see that. I see the current structures we have through FEMA, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to need, I think, a supplemental, as we've been talking about that. Uh, and if there's some specific things that come up, the delegation will do everything we can. I do want to just respond a little bit to the climate change question. I talked to the head of NOAA yesterday and asked him that question. And as it has been reported, the warmer weather, particularly over the ocean, that then comes uh, across the country and is here in Vermont, means that there's much, much more moisture in the air. So a rainstorm pre climate change would not have dumped in some places nine inches of rain, but all of that moisture in the air gets turned into rain that then gets uh, added to the volume, which is enormous. So that is very much a climate change related uh, situation. And then of course, with our ridge lines, it just created uh, a dynamic, a weather dynamic where it lingered longer. And with the combination of the lingering and the excess moisture that is climate change related, we had this vast volume of, of rain uh, that pre-climate change, we wouldn't have had it, would have just been a storm. 
question for Commissioner Morrison. It might be also directed to the governor, who's obviously not here, but was the state government lacking uh, the response in the early stages? The emergency command center closed Monday night when the storm was at its We did its not worst. close. We, we did, did not, not close. close. That is incorrect information. So when channel We went virtual. We, we had to evacuate the EOC in Waterbury. We never shut down the emergency operations center and every position was filled and leaning in virtually until we could re-aggregate re ourselves here at this building. So that is incorrect information that we chose not to uh, call out when it was originally published, but let me now call it out and make it very clear. We have activated our EOC since Sunday afternoon and it has been in continuous operation and as the disaster became, the scope of it became clear, we have bolted on more and more partners. So we never closed the EOC. Do you think that hindered our operations from not understanding uh, emergency management did not know 89 was closed till Channel 3 let them know? That's that, not true. that is not true either. As you, I'm, listen, you guys are the professionals in this. You know that misinformation is as big an issue as information and the information you share. That is also untrue. That I don't know what your source is, but it is untrue. We have chosen to focus on the important pieces of this disaster, which is an outstanding, well-oiled and well-practiced response. And both of the things you've just said are untrue, and we can unpackage that at another time. In regards to the dam uh, and managing the capacity of the reservoir, what does that look like in terms of, is it releasing some water, or how, how do you manage that? I don't think I have any, do you want to speak to that, Eric? Are you talking this, about a this, is, this is Eric Forend, who's the, direct, the interim director of Vermont Emergency Management. Uh, we don't have an, a representative of the Department of Environmental Conservation here right now, but he will maybe be able to give you some high level information. We've I had that. The governor was concerned about the Wrightsville Dam in particular. Yeah, the Wrightsville Dam is the, right the, the ones the governor has been speaking about. We've had eyes on it and uh, since Sunday night. Uh, but. What is happening is they get to a certain procedural step. The water's high enough, it has to go through the overflow. Again, there was some misinformation about its failure, or eminent failure, not accurate. It's, it's acting in the way that it's supposed to act, which gives us time to understand what the downstream effects are gonna be. So if we know that it's going to release a certain amount of water, a certain amount of cubic feet, we know how far it's gonna go. We know how far we need to activate folks or evacuate folks. We could send teams to do that. We did that the other day. Uh, that's dam, that dam specifically is now set down to about a foot under and it's sat there and it's stabilized. So we have different teams at different dams because in Vermont, one agency doesn't own all dams. Uh, so it's a concerted effort among a bunch of agencies and a bunch of different um, individuals. So we have those individuals here and we are watching them. The governor seemed to be suggesting though that you were going to be lowering the so, level of the dams in order to create capacity. Did I so, misunderstand it? Um, my name is Maggie Gender and I'm the Deputy Secretary for the Agency of Natural Resources, which oversees Department of Environmental Conservation, Forest Parks and Rec, and Fish and Wildlife. So our attention was really focused on the three flood control dams in Waterbury, Middlesex, which is Wrightsville, and Eastbury. Um, uh, Wrightsville is at reduced risk. Uh, we are going to continue to monitor it, monitor it, as everybody has said, given that we're watching the weather events. We just have to be vigilant. Our lead dam safety expert um, was sleeping at the Waterbury Dam Reservoir to release the dam floodgates and close and open them as necessary to keep communities safe. So um, when it comes to uh, the Wrightsville Dam in particular, we are, again, we're at reduced risk. We have, the, uh, we have been very fortunate that our facilities here in Vermont have withstood this pressure. It doesn't mean that we're not concerned um, as we move forward with more precipitation coming. So um, our dam safety program has been working with the Army Corps of Engineers to do an analysis exactly like Eric just said, um, to understand that if more precipitation comes and we're monitoring these levels, what does it look like for downstream so that we as um, dam owners can give the best data and information to emergency management so they know how to mobilize communities and keep everybody safe. So um, in terms of your question, we're not there yet, um, but the, the, the purpose of the way that the dam is set up is to withstand flood. And so it has its own mechanisms in place built into the structure to do that. So we call it the spillway. Um, it's pretty much an overflow system. So that's where we're at right now. So we just want to make sure, because there was a lot, again, misinformation about Wrightsville, where at reduced risk, 
we're watching it, we're monitoring it closely, and, um, and our team is, um, takes very seriously the responsibility uh, to give information to Vermonters as, uh, as, we, as we get it. It would seem that if the dam is only a foot above the spillway and there's storms coming that you've already discussed, that there would be the need, or maybe it makes sense, to do some limited release to create capacity behind the dam. Is that not what So the management of dams is a really technical um, uh, profession, and I'm happy to get you the answer to that question. I don't have it. I would be more comfortable having our dam, uh, our dam engineers give you the information to that. Okay. So I'm now, happy to give you my information. Did you want to speak to the fact that that's only the three dams that the state owns, and there are so, hundreds of other dams? So the Agency of Natural Resources owns 100 dams in the state of Vermont, and we regulate about 800 privately owned and municipally owned dams. Um, so. This is a very active space for us right now. <laughs> Commissioner Morrison, I think this is a question for you. What about healthcare infrastructure? Are hospitals accessible? Are they staffed? How is that looking right now? To my knowledge, they are all accessible. They are all staffed. During the course of the last 72 hours, I believe we had one personnel-related request to help facilitate uh, bringing staff to a hotel that where a lot of the roadways were closed but to my knowledge unless you shake your head no uh, the only other situation is a water situation at Copley that we're rectifying they're under a boil water notice uh, oh, so we're sorry. Copley okay. so we are um, reaching out for resources to that and it may be to FEMA but we're, we're working on that now what about delivery routes and supply chain for essential goods? It can be food, medication, gasoline, fuel. Have there been any interruptions that you're aware of of those deliveries to the state? Joe, do you want to backstop in on this? Sure. Yeah. On our side, from the emergency services and uh, emergency management, no. We've had no issues. Mm -hmm. And I would just add to that, you heard me yesterday say that our first priority is the national highway system. Our second priority are arterial routes that feed that. And I think I told you that our third priority are the critical routes that supply hospitals and other key resources. That's not to say we wouldn't take immediate intervention if a hospital had a need. But we at VTrans and along with our partners have been actively working since this thing began to keep those routes established. We do currently have some interruption on rail but we will have a forecast of when that should all be restored as soon as possible. And that's mostly fuel deliveries that come to it, it, the There's multiple commodities, but it's primarily fuel. There is some lumber, there's some animal feed. Okay. Yep, thank you. Secretary Flynn, have you noticed uh, an improvement <clears throat> due to the structural improvements from Irene? Yes. We work closely with the Agency of Natural Resources, primarily the Department of Environmental Conservation after Irene to take a look at specifications for how we design bridges. In fact, immediately after Irene, uh, back at the National Life Facility, where both ANR and VTrans at one time were on different floors, we embedded structural engineers with river engineers on the same floor in adjoining cubicles, no more silos just because we were separate agencies, so that we could best understand the sort of pressures that you've, you've heard of, uh, you know, climate concerns, so that we could best understand the forecast for the pressures we would see in the future, you know, that affect the hydrology and how we design structures. I think I may have mentioned yesterday, but an example would be a bridge that might have been built in the 60s when the highway system was established was perhaps a bridge that had a pier in the center of the water course with abutments on each shoulder, on each bank. Today we're designing bridges differently so that they can span that water course without having to have a pier in the center. Now that's not to say you won't find a bridge with a pier in it and remind me of that, but that might be one that's been built a while. Um, so we are looking to do things like that, to create a wider opening for debris and more water to pass through bridges so that, like you saw in Irene, when we had 34 bridges that were either destroyed or what primarily happened was the debris would come downstream and it would hit the pier in the middle and it would go around the abutments and it would take out the approaches of the, of the road to the bridge. So the actual structure survived, but you couldn't get onto it. So there's been a lot of things like that that have been beneficial uh, lessons learned since Irene. For the state volunteer program um, that you guys were talking about, do we have any kind of response or numbers on what that's gardener so far since it started? Is there a key number you guys are maybe trying to get to and one of those people can expect to be kind of deployed, if you will? 
So as we mentioned, the volunteer website, we're advocating everyone to go sign up through that. Uh, as of yesterday morning, there had already been 300 uh, folks that were signed up. Uh, we're also working with Serve Vermont, who has another 200 AmeriCorps that are getting staged and, and ready to assist. I'm wondering if there's someone who can provide some, a little more insight into the ongoing rescues, um, whether this is a situation where people are isolated because of damage to their homes, to their roads, or if there are people who you know, are stuck in their cars. I mean, have they been there this entire time? Any, any other details? So I can't give you any details about what they're doing right this minute because my information is several hours old. I can tell you that um, they last night one of the rescues was someone who drove around a, a road that was meant to be closed and got into trouble and they had to rescue somebody from, uh, from a vehicle. Um, there were 30 or so people and many animals uh, rescued from a residence, from residence, residential structures in the Jeffersonville area. And I don't know if there was another one or one off somewhere along the way. But as, as to what they're doing right this minute, I don't know. But if, if, if that's important to you, we can certainly get back to you on it. And I'm wondering in the shelters, how many people are relying on, on that? Shelter? We have the, do you recall the numbers? I don't. We, we do have census data that we can provide. We have census data as of the activity last night, and we can get that to you if you're interested in that. It, we can get you the information for the state-run shelters, and we are in the process of collecting the information for the locally-run and the Red Cross-run shelters. So some of the uh, homeless hotels have been flooded out. Uh, any, uh, as far as you know, uh, have those folks been able to relocate to some of the, uh, the shelters, the state shelters? I don't have that information. I think that would be an agency of human services question. Jen, uh, you said something about urging people to stay off of the waterways of the state. And obviously, I understand not going through areas where they're, that are flooded in cars. And well, But in Montpelier yesterday, there were all manner of people taking to kayaks and paddle boards and canoes. And these people, some of them have businesses they're trying to check on. I mean, are you urging people? Can you clarify what you're urging them not to do? You don't want them to be doing any of that? No, it's not safe. I mean, it's a do so at your own risk. There can be downed electrical lines. There can be oil, gasoline, other hazmat materials in that water that's yeah. flowed over the waterways. There can be um, street sign metal spikes that you could slip and fall on. I mean, there's all sorts of hazards in the water when you can't see to the bottom. Uh, so our, our recommendation is stay out of flooded areas and stay off the rivers until we get to a place where the currents have calmed down, uh, the water's not so churned right now, everything is brown, you cannot see, uh, and the debris has is, is been abated to some degree. Can, can I, I just have, have, a, I have a updated shelter numbers of folks. Uh, these, are the, these are the active shelters. I'm Jason Gibbs, Governor's Governor, Chief of Staff. Barry Auditorium, 58. Cavendish School, zero. Hartford High School, three. Ludlow Community Center, eight. Northern Vermont University Johnson Campus, 30. Rutland Senior High School, four. Smuggler's Notch, 45. Woodstock EMS Building, zero. I can ask the question for the Deputy Secretary. Has there been any sort of um, mitigation or cleanup efforts of any fuel or oil spills and thinking of the home heating tanks that have been Sure. Charged? Yeah, so we have a, um, as uh, Commissioner had mentioned, we have a, on our website, we have created a flood uh, portion of that. And that's a space where we're going to educate Vermonters on what to do about drinking water, septic and wastewater, um, hazardous materials. And so we have one pagers on instructing folks on what to do with that. And we'll be working with our partners, both contractors and other state and federal agencies to, to participate in that cleanup. Like I said, right now we're still in emergency management mode, um, and we'll be and we're simultaneously transitioning to recovery. So we're we're starting to post all of that information. We'll be working with Front Porch Forum, Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns to get that information out rapidly to communities. Is there any concern about flammability in those sorts of situations? I have not heard of any concern um, to date. Do you know 
know about the rates of discharge from the wastewater facilities? I don't, but I, we do have that information. I don't have it with me right now. I can get that for you. Secretary Flynn, do you have a, an updated number of state road closures for today? I do. So since I reported before we have a one minute. Okay. Forty six roads remain closed, seven roads remain partially open, thirty three roads have opened since I last spoke to you yesterday. Uh, and really quickly, we are still working to inspect thirty five bridges around the state of Vermont. We currently only know of two bridges that we lost. Significant difference from Irene. As I mentioned, there is uh, there is some damage to state owned rail property and that is uh, continuing to be assessed today. Much of it has to be hiked on foot uh, in some very remote areas, especially along the Green Mountain Railroad between Rutland and Bellis Falls. Both the Amtrak, Ethan Allen, and the Vermonter remain suspended at this time. The state-owned airports are okay. And AOT also owns two dams, which at this time are not providing any problems. Pardon me? The uh, The floating bridge in Brookfield, and I'm going to forget the route number, so don't hold me to this, but it might be Route 132, but it's in Vershire. We're still looking for the bridge, but we're not going to put it back. We just are curious where it went to. <laughs> and I'm sorry, the second number you said was uh, partial uh, closure. Seven. So what that means is one lane, a restriction. Yeah. Open for traffic, but restricted. So um, it's a great question, and it's certainly something that FEMA is working on nationally. Um, I think you know we've we've discussed climate change here, but um, I think what you know nobody doubts anymore whether or not we're having more storms, whether there's more flooding events, um, whether there's sea level rise. I mean, these things are not really open for debate anymore. So the implications on our flood maps um, are something that we have to account for. So, um, so I know this is a hot topic right now, um, but certainly something that's on FEMA's radar. Do you mind just spelling out your name? Sure, yeah, sure. Um, Lori, L-O-R-I. Last name is Ehrlich, E-H-R-L-I-C-H, two H's. And I'm the um, regional administrator, Region 1, for FEMA. And Region 1 is all six states of New England and ten tribal nations. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, everybody.